CPAs, bookkeepers, tax strategists, you name it. A CPA should be here to tell you reality. Have someone that you can go to to answer questions in the beginning can really yeah. save you a lot of headache down the road. They should be here to help you tax plan, reduce your tax liability legally. You still have to take ownership of the questions you're asking. You don't unfortunately get to play dumb and say, I'm sorry, IRS, I didn't know about that rule. Not knowing is not an excuse. I think that's what gets really scary, what gets really real in business is when you actually start making money. Numbers, you gotta think of numbers as the lifeblood, the blood of your business. You look at what you made, what you spent, what was left over. I mean, those are the, the basics, but what else should we be looking at and really honing in on? Have you ever watched Shark Tank? What's the very first question that they ask them? How much money have you made? What's Always. your revenue for the last quarter? That is the very first thing they will ask. Why? Because let your data direct you. It is like our motto here at Well Oiled. And anytime I'm working with a client, a client has a question, they want to know what should I do or what's the next thing? I immediately have to say, tell me the data. Like fill me in. I need to see specific numbers because that data is going to tell me what I should do this week, this month, this quarter, this year. And without that data, you're fooling yourself into thinking you know what your business needs. So I'm really excited because today I'm going to be interviewing Joel Jensen from Prime Corporate. They are a, an, an agency that has CPAs, bookkeepers, tax strategists, um, people that do like wills and trusts, and you name it, okay? And this is one of those types of people that you need in your partnership, right? You need to make sure you have a CPA on speed dial. You need to make sure you have a lawyer in your corner. Like there are certain people you need and you don't need them, you don't want them, when you need them, right? You wanna make sure you have that relationship already set up and solidified before something big happens. And then it's not too late, but it would have been a lot easier trying to be proactive versus being reactive. So Joel and I, the, the conversation flew by. I couldn't believe we were 30 minutes into it. Normally, I'm not that excited about profit and loss and tax planning and all of that, but it was such a great conversation because he works with business owners. So he's telling us like what to look at, what, what he's seeing, what mistakes are happening. And what he notices too is when somebody comes from a, a maybe a reactive CPA, a passive CPA, and then joins his firm, right? He's just seeing the differences in how business owners are showing up. He talks about what you're responsible for, right? I think a lot of us want to put the responsibility on the CPA, or we play dumb and say, oh, sorry, IRS, I didn't know that was not allowed, right? Like, no, no, no. He's like, this is your responsibility. Let me show you how to do this and what you should be doing, right? And then show you what the relationship of a CPA, business owner, right? Partnership, what does that actually look like? I will tell you inside of Well Oiled, when people come into our program, we see a lot of, I kind of want to say the word weird relationships with a CPA. And I know that sounds weird to say, but it is. It's it's like business. some business owners don't know their numbers or don't want to know their numbers. They're like, I'm not a numbers person. I'm going to hire the CPA and act like he's the owner and see if I can ask his permission to hire. Hey, can I afford this? Hey, can I? And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You don't know how to look at your numbers. You don't know how to find your numbers. You don't know how to make a decision without your CPA. We don't want you being reliant on anybody, including your CPA. They are there to, yes, guide you, but you are the owner. You are the person with the responsibility on your plate because no one is going to care about your business more than you do, okay? I wanna share one more quick story before I bring Joel on. And we have somebody inside a powerhouse and she's like, oh, I'm in this one program and it's free and I get it through the state for this. And it was like, wow, this is sounding like amazing. My, my first concern was, why would anybody hire us at Well Oiled if the states are starting to do this for free? And then she went on to continue the conversation that in this free thing that she gets, she talks to a CPA and the CPA told her by looking at her numbers, you absolutely cannot afford to hire anybody. And she was like, okay, but I'm maxed out. So then I can't grow the business if I can't hire and he kind of was in agreement with her, like, well, yeah, you are a capacity, but you do not have the money to hire somebody. 
So I was coaching her and saying, you need to hire somebody because you're so maxed out that that person you're going to hire is immediately going to bring in revenue and you'll get at a larger capacity and be able to start paying yourself more, paying them, you should see a profit, et cetera. He was in full disagreement of, but the math is the math and you don't have it. So we can't spend it, right? And I said to her, what's the alternative here? And she's like, that I stay in this situation permanently. We're overworked. We're doing all of the fulfillment, right? Dropping balls. So you have to be really careful because thankfully she was working with us and we were flat out saying this CPA, yes, on paper, I understand. On paper, yes, you don't look like you can hire. On paper, yes, he's totally 1000% right. But what he is not is an entrepreneur. He is not a business owner, right? He is not a risk taker. And we know that unless you hire somebody, you are gonna stay right here, right? So a CPA should be here to tell you reality. They should be here to help you tax plan to strategically reduce your tax liability legally. But what they should not be doing is making your business decisions. And what I love about Joel and Prime specifically is they're not here to boss you around and tell you what to do. They're here to guide and to give their opinion and their advice, but they're flat out saying, this is your responsibility. You need to take ownership in owning and leading the business and making decisions. And that is the part where I just trust them because of like the negative stuff I've seen with some other CPAs who are almost like taking ownership of somebody else's business, mostly because the owner is saying, here, you do it. I don't really want to deal with those numbers. And we have to change that narrative. So I'm really excited to open up this conversation and kind of shed a light on, is your relationship with your CPA working? Yes or no? He's going to fill you in with some things. Do you need one? Maybe you've been getting away without having one. And you might realize after today, that needs to change. So enjoy today's episode. It's a lot more fun than I think you're probably thinking. Jill is very different. We're going to get into some money saving tactics, money making tactics. Um, so enjoy today's episode. Hi, Joel. Welcome to Well Oiled Operations. Happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Talking about my favorite topic, which is typically uh, you know other people's money. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and my, my listener is definitely wanting to hear this because they want to keep and hold on to as much money as they can. They want to make sure that yeah. they're legally, you know, doing this the proper way. They don't want to be audited. They don't want to have anything pop up. And, and I think that's what gets really scary. What gets really real in business is when you actually start making money, right? It's like at first right. you're just trying to make money and then you do start making money. And then you get that first tax bill you weren't expecting. And right. maybe you didn't have a great CPA to help you through that. So it can be really scary and we need people like you to help us get through it for sure. It, yeah, I understand that. Uh, you know, I have a lot of, well, let's just say that I've worked with a lot of people who are just getting into business. They're just starting. So they're brand new. And oftentimes I like to help them through the pitfalls that they're probably going to run into as they kind of go along their business journey. The other thing is, you know, when you're first starting out, your uh, the tax planning strategies, what is needed is going to be vastly different then a year later, for example, when you're finally yeah. making money, people need to realize that, that it's not one situation fits all. It should be kind of a constant look at what's happening within your business and how do I tax strategize around where I am within my kind of business life cycle. So, yeah. uh, it, you know, you need someone good that you can have on tap, so to speak. Yeah. To help you through those situations. Yeah. We have a wide range of people listening from somebody who probably is just getting started to somebody who's already, you know, been making millions and have had many CPAs. Yeah. And what's funny is when I got started in business, I always was wondering like, well, what, when am I serious enough to need a CPA? Right. Like, mm. like it's still kind of a baby business. It's still kind of, but what's funny is when I felt like I actually needed one, I felt like it was not late, too late, but I wish I would have had one sooner right? because yeah. I, I needed it when things weren't going the greatest because of mistakes I made because I didn't understand fully the tax law. And honestly, in the beginning, just I would say as soon as you decide to go into business and have what we call this profit motive, profit motive kind of uh, encompasses everything we do from a business perspective. I like to say my actions will follow my intentions. And so if I have the intent to make profit, then I have certain actions that will just basically kind of lay themselves in front of me as I start to spend money to produce that profit. So immediately as I think, hey, I'm going to, this is going to be a business regardless of its size, have someone that you can go to, to answer questions in the beginning can really yeah. save you a lot of headache down the road. 
is what yeah. we're trying to prevent. I mean, guidance, right? Guidance. We absolutely. Yeah. We just don't know. We don't know what we don't know. We don't know what's coming. Um, you know, even me at this level, I'm I'm asking my advisors, right? Like, and now what? And and what is the next thing I don't know about because I've never been there? Like, fill me right. in, keep me updated, all of that. So I love it. So first of all, um, can this is gonna sound so basic, but can you talk about even just like a CPA, bookkeeper, accountant, the differences, which ones you need and Maybe somebody who yeah. has one doesn't realize they need the other. Time to upgrade. Right. So it is interesting when you say, when you start to kind of dissect what the various aspects maybe of what I do, typically CPAs have a wide range of things that they can do. Yeah. But I will say not all CPAs are the same either. You know, you can have a financial CPA that really is just focusing on books, or you can have a tax CPA that really just focuses on tax. And then you can have a tax strategist that really is just trying to put things into play to save you money, right? So you have yeah. all these different types of people. And even and then there's the bookkeeper as well. Yeah. So but this is this already was gold for so many people because they might be thinking, wait, which one do I have? Who yeah, is my CPA they're naturally? Be different. Exactly. Yeah, big difference. Yeah. And, and CPAs, you know, if you go to a lawyer, oftentimes you're looking for a lawyer within a specific segment, you know, whatever right. you have going on in your business world. CPAs kind of tend to work the same way and people don't really realize it. You know, some CPAs just want to do your basic tax returns. That's all they want to do. They don't want yeah. to have, you know, they want their summers off because they work so much during the year, but others are getting more involved with their clients, you know, because uh, they need more, let's say tax strategies, more involvement, if you will, with your CPA. It's not just about compliance and compliance is what I term filing a tax return. It's complying with the tax rules and regs that I got to do, got to send in a tax return. Tax planning and tax strategy is something completely different. That's where they get into your books. Look at your income, look at your expenses, try to figure out different ways that you could save money by redeploying funds in different areas, You know, really putting strategies in place to save you money. And those two things are very separate. They are not the same thing. So if you're going to a CPA or even a tax preparer, an EA, for example, to do your tax returns, just realize if you want those additional services, they are not the same. It's not the same thing. Yeah. So getting really clear on what do I need using those phrases in conversations of right. asking specific questions to see, wait, am I going to get that? Is that something you specialize in? Or are they like, oh, no, no, we just want to do, like you said, the well, tax return. I just want to do your tax return. Yeah. And if that's the case, you know, let them do your tax return and then find someone who can sit down and actually go through your business. Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk to about like what I've noticed is notice because I've had many CPAs, I've maybe like four or five in, in 20 some years, yeah. but I've also worked with a lot of people that work with CPAs. So I've, I feel like I've, I've seen a lot and I've noticed that some are very proactive and some are very reactive. Like they're right. here to tell you what just happened. And then there are some that are here to tell you things that they're noticing and, and things you need to be thinking about moving forward. How do we make sure that when we're looking for a CPA or we're questioning our CPA, like what do you feel like should be a standard for how a CPA does look at that information and get and feed the information back to a business owner. The first thing I would do is if I were to sit down with a CPA, I would ask them, when can I meet with you? That's your very first oh, question. Okay. And sometimes people get confused. You know, you'll, they'll sit down when it's time to do your tax compliance work. Let's say like right now, for example, Hey, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do my 2023 tax return. And I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to have this conversation with you. Hey, CPA, Joel, what can I do? to lower my tax burden for 2023. And my response is going to be, it's 2024, man. What, you yeah. know, why were you sitting down with me last year to go through this information when we really could actually do something? Because now all I can do is kind of comply with the law and see the right. results of what you actually did. So yeah. I would say how often and when can I meet with you? Because if I'm meeting with you, let's say now for 2024, now I'm being proactive in what I'm doing this year. If I'm trying to sit down and look at 2023, not much I can do. Let's call it reactive. So really, it's it's up to the business owner to get that relationship with the CPA and start meeting them with them throughout the year. Yeah. And I love that. Like, take on the ownership of being the business owner and and owning and protecting your money and going yeah. to them with with saying certain things. I think sometimes we think, well, that's their job. That's what they should be doing, right? However, you have a responsibility too. So really go there understanding. And I think this podcast is going to be a great example of like what you should know and what you should be doing and all of that. So I'm so happy to hear that. 
Now, I know we're recording this at a specific time of year and the podcast will live on for a few years. So what is a great month out of the year? Like how early is too early to say to my CPA, I want to talk about this upcoming year? Okay. So I would say between January and April 15th is maybe not the best time. (laughs) Don't bug them. <laughs> Just because, that. Okay. Because their their attention may not be able to be kind of fully directed towards yeah. you because of all the chaos that happens during those three months. Okay. So what I would say is like I would say May rolls around, June at the latest, I would start having those conversations. I love it. Because June is like a the midpoint of the year. Yeah. So I have some history now. I can tell you what's been going on yeah. up to this point and what I foresee happening the rest of the year, because now I can start to make some changes. If Love I'm it. waiting until December, while you still can do some things, I would say you're missing the boat. You know, you just wasted yeah. like five, six months of planning, spending, getting things in the place that you would have had had you met earlier. Okay. So I'd say as soon as April 15th is over, let's give our wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe not like see, April 16th. Like maybe, maybe just not April 16th. They are probably sleeping somewhere. It's the yeah, one yeah. day that they hide. Yeah. But, uh, you know, May rolls around, you know, let's start. Let's get okay. it, Let's get into it. So good. And and then I love, Joel, that you're saying, no, December's not the best time. Now, if you're here this December 1st, you, you need to do it now, but it is not ideal, right? It's we want to get more time. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. I love it. What are some things that you see when working with business owners, maybe when they do switch CPAs, when they do come to you for the first time, are there any common things that you're you notice with how, I'm curious, like, do you see entity, you know, entities being labeled incorrectly? Like, what do you see that people should be questioning or thinking about? So some of the things I saw for, let's say, the past couple of years were whenever there's a tax code change, mm. even it's even new to us, right? Yeah. So it's not like we know. We have to kind of figure it out as we go along. We would see some uh, of the uh, QBIT, the qualified business income deductions being missed because of how it was uh, computed. It was very, it's a very odd deduction, but it's something that happens actually inside your personal tax return. And I see far too often, if you're in the rental properties, you know, dealing with rental properties or have them, which blows my mind where depreciation is not actually taken against the building. I see that more times than I would like. Okay. And it kind of uh, worries me. And then the other thing would be simply missing on expenses that I think are traditional and very ordinary because yeah. people don't think about them. They're not sitting down with their CPA to say, what type of expenses should I have yeah. based on the industry that I am in? You wouldn't believe how many online businesses I have looked at where they have left out their merchant fees of all things, for example. Okay. You know, what's typical within an industry? You should have a list from your CPA. Hey, this is my business. What's typical within my industry? These so are the they can catch. So you can start missing. to catch it. So, okay. you know, like I'll give you one of the easiest things in the world. Like, do you have a cell phone? I know you have a cell phone. Of, of course. course. Everyone does. Do you use your cell phone for business? Of yes. course you do. You know how often I see cell phone left out of an organizer or a description of my expenses within a business all the time. Yeah. So I would say those little things that you're, I call it the connecting principle, that you are paying for anyway. And you don't think of them as part of your business. But the moment I'm in business and I can connect all these expenses to my business, I can get a deduction for them. I see internet. You have internet at your house. Everyone does. If you're online, dealing with clients, dealing with you know emails, looking up things that are specific to your business at home, guess what? That internet becomes a deduction. Yeah. So it's these little things I say that, you know, taxes are like death by a thousand paper cuts, right? You start to stack up missed items, one on top of the other, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm overpaying the IRS more than I wished. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we want to do, right? We want to figure out how can I make more? How can I, how can I get more out of what I'm already doing? And these are big things that a lot of people do miss. So interesting. Um, Talk to us a little bit about, like, I learned this, you know, a few years in where I feel like my CPA became a Rolodex, right? All of a sudden I didn't even know he knew a lawyer that could help me with my trademark or he knew. Right. So can you talk a little bit about um, maybe people aren't thinking about utilizing a CPA as a trusted advisor and and like wh- how that even makes sense for them. Yeah, so I would say it even goes beyond professional services. Most CPAs okay. know lawyers, for yeah. sure. I mean, I have I have a list of lawyers that I deal with and work with all the time. But you know what else I have? A list of other business owners. Mm. So I'm meeting, let's say I have, you know, an average size clientele. It's maybe I have 300 to 500 clients that I'm working with. 
typically like someone like me would traditionally only work with people that have businesses. So when you sit down and, and like in, within my office and we start discussing what's going on in your business and you say, you know what, I really need uh, a new website. I'm having some difficulties. I can't find anyone that's good. Guess what? I may be working with someone who is phenomenal in building websites. Right. So I have the ability, which I do all the time, connecting my clients into spaces that will help them from a business growth standpoint. Mm. So a CPA is always a good resource for not only professional services, yeah. investment advisors, lawyers, you know, all those people, but we also, you got to think of our clientele and who we're working with. We may be able to put you together for some definite advantages on your end. I love it. Yeah. It's so good to know. And I remember the first time my CPA referred me to somebody, I was like, oh, I wouldn't even have thought to ask you for, you know, it just yeah. didn't even click that he would be able to do that. And now it's one of the things I'm always thinking about, right? Yeah. You have this Rolodex. It's amazing. All right. Let's talk about numbers we should know as a, as a business owner. So uh, when you come into our program, we'll ask simple things like, what were your gross revenues last year? What was your profit margin? And it is shocking how many people will say to me in February, March, oh, I'm not sure. I have to wait to get my taxes back from my my CPA. Like they can't, yeah. or like ballpark. Like, what do you think you made last year? Like, I don't know. The, the taxes aren't done. And these are people that are not looking monthly. They're waiting once a year to find out what's happening from yeah. this guy, right? Isn't that so hard? What should we be doing? Fill us in. Please help I mean us with this. Okay, so numbers, you got to think of numbers as the lifeblood, the blood of your business, because they give you the information that you need in order to make critical in those financial decisions regarding your business. And if you're unsure about where you are, it's hard to tax plan around it. You know, we don't really work with hypotheticals, so to speak. So the, that's the very first question I would ask you if you sat down from a business perspective. I would say, how much money are you making? And I'm not talking about revenue. Well, I'd ask about revenue, but I want to know where is your income? Right? What do we have to work with? What are, what, what are we trying to reduce, for example? And if you don't know that, how am I supposed to plan around it? Yeah. Right. So I, I like to say this. I like to say use the first week of every month to get your books up to date for the last one. Yeah. So the first, let's call it seven to 10 days of uh, June, for example, I'll make sure that my May records are there. That way, if something pops, you don't know what's going to pop. If something happens or you need to divert some money in a di in a direction yeah. or an opportunity presents itself, do you know how much money you have that you could redeploy in a certain area? Yeah. And if your numbers aren't up to speed, then how can you make that decision realistically based on your business? Right. And it makes a big difference. Are we short a little from last month? Are we ahead a lot from last month? Yeah. I mean, that makes a big difference in my decision on what I want to do today. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. So uh, you got to keep them up to date. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I won't even get into like tax payments, estimated yeah, tax yeah, payments. Yeah. How do we no, calculate and we don't, those? We don't have to go there. I mean, but it's like, like, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's it a, really is. And then I fell into this trap of I had a CPA who knew I needed those numbers. So he just emailed them to me, you know, once a month. Yeah. And I never opened them. So I was getting uh, them. Yeah. But you don't. <laughs> I was getting them. They were updated. Everything was reconciled. I never looked. And I never looked because I was busy. I didn't understand it. Maybe I understood a little too well where I was and I didn't want to actually like see the number, right? So you, know you really, yeah. you got to make sure you're doing something with that information. And if you can't read it, then ask your CPA to explain it. But you, and all you got to do is you look at what you made, what you spent, what was left over, right? I mean, those are the, the basics, but what else should we be looking at and really honing in on? Let me ask you this. Have you ever watched Shark Tank? Have you ever watched that TV show? Of course, show? yes. What's the very first question that they ask them? How much money have you made? What's Always. your revenue for the last quarter? That is the very first thing they will ask. Why? Because that lets them know the value of whatever it is that you are offering them. Yep. And without knowing that, every single one of them is going to pass. Yeah. So it's not that I want people to be accountants. I understand that you don't want to be an accountant. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say it's the most glamorous thing <laughs> in the world, but what it does do is it affects your money. And if you yeah. care enough about your money, it kind of forces you to kind of uh, take control of that aspect of your business. When you're bringing up Shark Tank, right? They won't move forward without knowing it because they don't know what to even do with you next. Like they don't exactly have that right. data to tell them anything about your business. And if you are purposely blinding yourself 
to that data that maybe is sitting in your inbox that your CPA did send you, right? You are really not knowing what to do for this next month coming up. And that turns into not just next month, but next quarter and, and next year. And that's where it gets really scary. Yeah, and if I'm trying to maximize the cash flow back to me, I like to implement this little thing we call a zero-based budgeting. But really, that's kind of just a fancy term for what I like to call question everything. Okay. So when I look at my income statement, and if I were to go through yours, I would I would start looking at your individual line items. And then I would break that down to its individual charges that are categorized into a line item. And then I would ask you, was that really necessary? Did you need to do that? Did you Did this expense here produce money on the back end? If it didn't, why are you spending money on it? If you spent money on advertising, do I know how much it produced from an income standpoint? And if it was under what you expect it to be, then you go, why? Then you change to produce more money. I mean, when it comes to the operational aspects and making quick changes, it, you are always going back to your income statement, your profit and loss statement to see the revenue that was produced based on the money that you were spending. And that's great if you have a great CPA, Joe, like you, that's going to ask those questions and say, yeah. hey, I see you spent 7000 on Google ads. What'd you make? Because well, we've exactly. had clients that come in and say, well, I'm not making anything with Google ads, but I have to spend that much because my competitors are doing it. So we're like, hold up. You aren't getting clients from Google, but you're spending seven grand. And this is a true story. You're spending seven grand a month on Google ads because you think you have to. Yeah. There are people making those decisions. And guess what? They didn't have a CPA questioning it because the business owner was justifying it. They're like, oh, no, no, yeah, we're doing, we need to, that's what we have to do, right? But you do wanna make sure that you have this amazing partnership, right, with your CPA, that you can go back and forth and ask those questions, yeah. but but be honest and transparent, right? Yes. They see everything. Like, you guys know our business better than anybody. You see what's going in, what's coming out, oh. where the money's happening, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, sometimes I think uh, we need a, uh, some kind of degree in psychology or something, because if yeah. you're going to talk to me about how much money you make, you're going to talk to me about every other aspect of your life and what's going on. So it makes it a very personal relationship. And to an extent, that's really good, because if you're vested in me, I'm going to become vested in you, right? And that's kind of the partnership that you want from a CPA standpoint. Yeah. You want them to be vested in your life. Like I get Christmas cards and Christmas gifts and all kinds of things from my client because of the relationship I try to build with them because they know this person is a trusted advisor when it comes to my money and my life. And that's what becomes really, really important in that relationship. Yeah. So good. Uh, Joel, I want to ask about this daunting, you know, tax world where the tax changes are happening and now the state's changing this and then the IRS changing that. How do we keep up with that? Like, is it our responsibility? Should our CPA be helping us? What what part do we own so we know what we need to do? Yeah, so I would say I would keep up with it to the extent I can ask my CPA questions. Perfect. Like, oh, I saw something like this. I'm not, you don't need to become an expert in it. Quite frankly, that's my job. Yeah. What you can do is then call me, set an appointment and say, hey, I'm seeing the news. It's talking about, you know, capital gains going up to 40%. What does that really mean? Is that passing? That's my job to keep up with that. That's what I do every day, right? I live in that world. Yeah. What you want to do is, is have people in place, kind of a team stacking mentality that are proficient and experts in the areas you don't want to be. Yeah. Like I know a lot about legal. That doesn't mean I want to be a lawyer. So when yeah. those legal things come up, I'm going to hire that out. I'm going to go talk to someone about it, even based on my knowledge from a law perspective, right? So when it comes to taxes, just make sure you can ask questions or just have a conversation, set an appointment, say, hey, what are you seeing over the last, you know, let's say quarter yeah. from a tax perspective? Update me so I know how then to implement those things inside my business. Yeah, it's so important. And, you know, we serve people all over the country. Really, we have people in Canada and UK and places like that. And I'll hear people say, well, do you know the law in California? Because if I hire you, I want to, I'm like, listen, you need to know the law in California. Yeah. You need to know, like, you do really need to know what is going on, what is in your state. But then also, I'm never doing that solo because like you said, I don't know enough. I know enough to say, I think I need to be aware of That's this. Good. But You Joel, know enough to ask the question. Yeah, That's like Joel, perfect. does capital gains tax, is that anything to do with me, right? I know enough yeah. to like question it. Now I get to go to you, the expert to say, right. fill me in. Yeah, perfect. so good. 
Um, so that that's really important. It, it Even though we're saying you need a great CPA, you need a great bookkeeper, right? You need all these people. You still have to take ownership, right? Of the questions you're asking, the things you need to be aware of. You don't unfortunately get to play dumb and say, I'm sorry, IRS, I didn't know about that rule. <laughs> Please forgive you know, me. They don't you know, care, the, right? The, they don't. The IRS actually, so people will bring me in, you know, and they try to deal with the IRS. Like I had someone, they're not clients, but I have a lot of friends, you know, I'm yeah. happy to like help them out. And they will sometimes bring me letters where they try to deal with the IRS and specific issues. And the IRS actually has language within some of their responses that says exactly what you just said, that not knowing is not an excuse yeah. not to do it. The IRS says, if it's out there, you should know it. Not knowing is not an excuse. Yeah. So and make sure you're aware. It's good to hear that because a lot of business owners will say like, well, I don't keep up with that. I don't, that, why, why would I need to know that? They are expecting you to know that when 100%. you sign up to be a business owner. Yep. We're yeah. all charged with paying our own tax and the IRS puts the responsibility on you. Yeah. So yeah. having that partnership really helps you out. Man. Oh, it does. Right. Cause it's a lot like that scares me even just saying it out loud. Like it is my responsibility. Cause I know I'm not smart yes. enough in that area to understand it, but that's why we equip ourselves and build these amazing partnerships with people like CPAs, like lawyers, right? People that, that that's, this is just their wheelhouse. Yeah. Correct. So amazing. Yep. Okay. I can't believe we're already coming up in 30 minutes. This time is flying. Oh, wow. I know I'm like, whoa, um, I do want to ask you, um, I know you guys at, at Prime specifically, like you are big on keeping yourself updated, right? Constantly right. learning. You, I just, I love that about you. Not every place is like that, right? I, my first CPA was somebody that had done it for many, many years and was probably behaving like he was 20 years ago, but right. there's a lot of new things going on and happening. So how do you, what's the expectation there and how do you guys at Prime constantly evolve yourself as well? Yeah. So we do lots of educational uh, webinars, meetings, conversations. I film a lot of educational material going over these types of issues. Uh, I think it's really important for me to continually learn. If I thought that I knew everything, I would be lying. Okay. So, be, which means that because the tax code and people don't realize this actually changes every year that I need to keep on top of what is changing and how does that affect my clients? So yeah. if I'm constantly learning, right, which I think is really important from a CPA standpoint, if they stop learning, I think, uh, you know, they get stagnant and they're, yeah. <laughs> they're not as proficient maybe. Uh, but if I continually learn, that means my clients will be continually, continually uh, learning because I'm going to give them that information. So we do it through emails. We do a lot of webinars. I bring people on. I have these kinds of discussions all the time yeah. uh, because they're just that important. Yeah. I mean, think of like an analogy for people listening. You know, do you want a Facebook ads expert that hasn't learned anything new about Facebook since 2020? Absolutely exactly. not. Like, <laughs> it's just not, not even like, why bother? So you yeah. want to make sure that your CPA is investing in themselves, educating themselves, putting yes. in that time and energy because absolutely. you're going to feel it. You will absolutely feel it. You, and you'll know. And I will say that you'll probably know just by speaking with them in the first him or her in the first 15 minutes. Yeah. You'll figure it out pretty And a great question is like, how do you keep up with the tax law? How do you keep up with learning and growing yourself? And Oh, it's a great question. I, I basically look at educational materials every day. Yeah. Every I mean, day. I'm looking at news. I'm on alerts, what's happening. And a lot of my stuff goes kind of more towards Washington, D.C. What are they doing? What are they passing? Uh, I, I have a community. So I used to work for Ernst & Young. So it's one of the big four accounting firms. I was there for about a decade. Yeah. And then as we have left, we formed communities, you know, our kind of nerd community, as we call yeah. it, you know, of a bunch of CPAs that get together and talk about these specific issues. So we are part of organizations and all it. these different things to kind of help us help our clients. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Okay, Joel, I could keep chatting with you. This has been so good. I would love for you to share. We are big prime like advocates, I would love for you to share a little bit more about Prime, what types of services you you guys offer, who you typically serve, um, and share more information with our uh, community. Yeah, so we actually mostly serve business owners. That's kind of uh, where we choose to operate. So we set up entities uh, for people who are just getting into business, yeah. and we actually help people who are already in business who maybe have set up entities incorrectly. So we can maybe show them a better way to yeah. structure things that would be more beneficial from a business standpoint. 
Yeah. We do wills, we do estates, so we do wealth planning as well. Those things go hand in hand with each other, especially when we're business owners. We do corporate credit to help you get the credit you need in order to go pay for expenses that produce income. And then we do tax-related services. So educational services that we have, tax returns, we do compliance work. I think if we're only doing compliance work, we're missing half the battle. I think tax strategies, tax, uh, you know, creating those tax strategies that are going to put money back into your pocket then are shown within those tax returns. So we kind of put those two yeah. things side by side, which are, which are equally important. Yeah. Amazing. And, you know, even just the entity situation, I set up my business as an LLC and then was advised, hey, it's time we try to actually get you as an S Corp. So you might be thinking, oh, no, I'm fine. I did it right. And my person advised me to do it. Yes, but sometimes they advise you, okay, that benefited you maybe five years ago, but today maybe it doesn't make sense. So it's really, really important to understand that too. So everybody listening. Yeah, so that is a, that is one aspect of your, I always call it the business life cycle as you kind of go through it all. Yeah. That, you know, what is good for you today, something maybe different a year from now even. So always keeping on top of it, speaking with experts to make sure that you are always, you know, on the top of your game. Yeah, I love it. So if anybody's listening and wants to get more information about Prime, uh, wants to set up a consultation with them, you can go to Prime Partner dot info slash woo w o o so it's prime partner dot info slash woo and you'll get to speak of somebody on their team and see if there is something that you could benefit from so joel thank you so much for your time so thank you for welcome. shedding a light on a topic that maybe sometimes we think is boring it really isn't like we don't need to be working on it it's not the fun marketing and all the things we want to do but it is necessary and thank you for just yes. coming here and sharing more details on that so we appreciate your time 